be finding Malachi chapter number 4. Chapter number 4. As you're turning, uh, I want you to make sure over the next several weeks that you take note in your bulletin of our fall revival, our Sunday night series, Revival Nights. And uh, I'm going to be saying more about this and explaining to you what's going to be going on, what we're going to be doing beginning on uh, Sunday night, September the 18th, going through Sunday night, October the 30th. And I'll let you know all about that. You see all the speakers that we have that will be coming uh, to Blue Ridge View. We'll have two services. Uh, the first service at Pickens High School with every church in our association. And then we will close our Revival Emphasis Series uh, at, back at Pickens High School once again with every church in our association. And then in between there, here at Blue Ridge View, we're going to be having our, our Sunday night series and, and it's going to be uh, around the theme, Operation Outreach. And each of our guest speakers that will be coming during uh, uh, those nights will be challenging us to get out and to be winning people to Jesus Christ, but also giving a great, great evangelistic appeal while here in our services. So we're going to be challenged to bring those that don't know Christ, bring them with us on these nights in hopes and in prayer that they would turn to Jesus as Lord and Savior of their life. Amen? All right, Malachi chapter number 4. I want you to stand as we honor the reading. God's inspired, inerrant, infallible word. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. Ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Thank you, and you may be seated. May God add his blessings to the reading of his word. I told you this morning that on four occasions, Malachi uses the word behold. And each time it's used to introduce some divine proclamation. We see it in chapter 2 in verse 3. We see it in, in chapter 3 in verse 1. In verse 1 of chapter 4 and verse 5 of chapter 4. That word behold, it calls attention to something unique and it's called or it's used to call special attention to what is about to be said or to what is about to be proclaimed. Proclaimed, And so I told you this morning, you can look at that word behold and you can view it as a blinker light. You can view it as a, uh, an alarm signal. And uh, so what we see after that, what we see after that blinking light, it says stop what you're doing, pay very close attention to what I'm about to say. And so Malachi, here's what he does. He exhorts us, to pay special attention to the truth that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming. Malachi is saying, give me your complete attention. There is something I want you to pay special attention to. I want you to be particularly aware of this, and that is the truth that the Lord cometh. You see, the great motivation, proclamation, exclam exclamation, and, and anticipation of our day is the truth that Jesus is coming. If there is anything that this generation should pay careful attention to and be particularly aware of, it is that the Lord is coming. You know, the preaching or the theme of Malachi's preaching is a challenge to get ready for the Lord's return. I believe today that God's behold has never been clearer. It's never been more urgent to heed than it is right now. The Lord cometh and we need to be ready 
as, as never before for his coming. I told you this morning that we need to be ready individually. We close with an individual appeal this morning. We need to be ready as individuals for the coming day of the Lord. We need to be ready corporately. We need to be ready as the church. For the coming of the Lord. And we need to be ready constantly because it could happen at any moment. So the description is given from the Bible as to what that coming will be like for both the sinner and the saint. What it's going to be like for those that have heeded the warning and they're looking for his coming. But also what it will be like for the lost at his coming. So Malachi says, for behold, the day cometh. The emphasis there is on the word day. It's a time period. He, he's not talking about a 24-hour period. He's speaking about an event of the ages. The begins with the rapture of the church. It concludes there in Revelation chapter 20 around the great white throne judgment. And so Malachi describes what that day will be like for those who are lost and for those who are saved. And so this morning we parked our car, we planted our feet in the very first point. We took verse 1 apart, word for word, just about phrase by phrase, if you will. We took verse 1 apart. We saw that there is coming a day of the sinner's judgment. And here's what we learned about that. We learned that it is a future judgment that awaits the lost man. Notice in verse 1, the Bible says, The day cometh. We may sit here today and we may think, You know what? We've been hearing all about this coming day of the Lord. We've been hearing about it for years and years. The Bible uh, taught it for years and years. We've been thinking about it for thousands of years since Christ came and nothing has happened. Listen to me. Based on the Word of God, Jesus is coming. And because He has not come tonight, there is a future judgment that awaits the lost man. Listen, it's also a fiery judgment that awaits the lost man. Notice in verse number 1, Malachi talks about the burning hell. He will burn, the sinner will burn as in an oven. The Lord will burn them up. He shall leave them neither root nor branch. A fiery judgment awaits the lost man. Fire symbolically describes the severity of the judgment. Malachi says in verse uh, number one, sinners will be like stubble. A handful of dry grass, twigs thrown into a roaring fire. Listen to me, my friend. There is not a more vivid picture of the severity of God's judgment than that of fire. You think with me about the fires of hell, the lake of fire. They are the means whereby God imparts judgment on the sinner for all of eternity. It's future judgment that awaits the lost man. It's a fiery judgment that awaits the lost man. But it's fitting judgment that awaits the lost man. Notice what uh, Malachi says. Malachi speaks of those who face this future fiery judgment. He speaks of them as the proud. Those that all that do wickedly. The proud, those that do wickedly and do unrighteousness as a habitual uh, lifestyle. It's their habitual activity. And then notice that final judgment awaits the lost man. If you reject God in this life, if you reject God in this life, you'll be rejected in the next life for all of eternity. The Bible says you'll be cast into that lake of fire burning with brimstone. And so Malachi says, behold, he says, pay attention. Listen to what I'm about to say. The day cometh, behold, the Lord cometh. And for the sinner, it will be a day of judgment. But notice, last of all tonight, there is coming a day of the saints' jubilation. The saints' jubilation. Hey, it was bad news this morning, but the good news we're going to look at tonight. I, I didn't, well, I'm not going to say that, but uh, I made some mistakes there in the first service this morning. But I am so grateful for verse 2. 
uh, it, there in verse 1 we see what's going to happen to the lost man in judgment and what's coming to a world that is going to be judged by Almighty God. But aren't you grateful for verse number 2? But unto you that fear my name. Amen? Here's what's going to happen to those who are right with God. What a difference for the lost and the saved at his coming. For the lost man, that day is going to be a day of grief. But for the saved, it will be a day of glory. For the sinner, it will be a sad day. But for the saint, it's going to be a glad day. For the sinner, it's going to be a hellish day. But for the saint, a heavenly day. For the sinner, it's going to be retribution. But for the saint, it's going to be reward. For the sinner, it will be judgment day. But for the saint, it will be jubilation day. Amen? Now notice in verse 2 what Malachi says. When we're talking about the jubilation of the saint in that day when the Lord returns, notice he talks about the glory that awaits us. The glory that awaits us. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. His coming is described as sunshine. First slide, beautiful dawning of a new day. The night is over and past, and the glory of a new day has dawned. Notice again, those that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. You see, when Jesus comes for his children, it is going to signify, it will begin the dawning of a new and glorious day. It will be a day, the Bible says, when the Son of Righteousness with healing in his wings arises. That healing in his wings, he's going to come one day and he's going to heal every sickness. He's going to wipe away every tear of sorrow. He's going to banish all suffering. He'll heal the depressed, the diseased, and the discouraged. He'll heal the tears and the tribulations and the trials. There are going to be no more nights with pain, no more heartache, no more troubles, no more trials. His coming will expel the darkness. It will bring a new day in which the rays of His righteousness will bring the warmth of a glorious heavenly healing. Boy, I don't know about you, but I'm ready for that day right now. Amen? I'm ready for him to come right now. Boy, if we needed anything in our world today, we need healing. We need the Son of Righteousness to come with healing in his wings. One day, a man by the name of C.A. Blackmore, one of America's pioneer radio preachers, he was on the radio and he was preaching on the return of the Lord. Here's what he said in that uh, sermon that he was sharing on the radio. He said, my friend, we have a glorious hope. The Bible calls it a blessed hope for Christians. The Bible tells us that one day the trumpet will sound and Jesus will come back to take his children home. Dear friend, all your suffering and pain will be over. We'll have a new body. Arms and legs that are missing will be replaced. Friend, we'll be like Jesus. You'll have a glorified body someday. Some golden daybreak when Jesus comes back. Well, a few days later, Blackmore received a letter from a woman listener who had been bedridden for years. And here's what she wrote to C.A. Blackmore. She said, Reverend Blackmore, the message you gave on Jesus' is coming was such a blessing to me. I've been an invalid for almost 25 years, and sometimes I get so discouraged. I get so discouraged I can hardly wait for the Lord to come to think I'll be able to walk again and there will be no heartaches there. Thank you so much for your sermon. Well, Blackmore's son, Carl, was the pianist and soloist for the broadcast. And he too had been moved by what his father had said and he remembered in his father's sermon the phrase, some golden day daybreak. And it gave us the words to this great hymn. Some glorious morning sorrows will cease. Some glorious morning all will be peace. Heartaches all ended, labor all done. Heaven will open and Jesus will come. Sad hearts will gladden, all shall be bright. Goodbye forever to earth's dark night. Changed in a moment like him to be. Oh, glorious daybreak, Jesus, I'll see. 
Oh, what a meeting there in the skies. No tears nor crying shall dim my eyes. Loved ones united eternally. Oh, what a daybreak that morning will be. Some golden daybreak, Jesus will come. Some golden daybreak, all battles, all won. He'll shout the victory, break through the blue. Some golden daybreak for me and for you. Hey, Blue Ridge View, have you heard tonight? Jesus is coming, amen? It's going to be a glorious new day for the redeemed, for the saved, for the saint, the son of righteousness with healing in his wings is coming, amen? The glory that awaits us. But notice, last of all, notice Malachi talks about the joy that will accompany us. Notice what he says in verse number 2. He says, and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Now, you've you got to get a mental picture of this tonight. It's the picture of a calf going out to pasture. The phrase grow up, it actually means leap for joy or frisk. It's a picture of young calves that have been shut up in a dark stall for the night. And when the morning comes they're let out of that stall into wide open pastures so they, they can jump and they can leap and they can romp in that field and feed in that lush green pasture. And so the image that we ought to get in our mind is these little calves leaping and jumping and running about, uh, leaping as frisky calves. Hey, listen to me this evening. When the dawn of that new day comes and we're set free from the stall of this life and from the stall of this body, from all that binds and changes or chains us, listen, to enjoy the heavenly pastures of that celestial land, listen, we'll be leaping and we'll be jumping and we'll be running like a frisky little calf that has been set free from his pen. Hey, I'm confident that one day I will run around the street of glory. I believe I'll be shouting and praising and rejoicing over the grace and mercy of my great God. Hey, did you hear what she's saying? When I hear the deaf man hearing, when I see the blind man seeing, the crippled man walking, the mute man speaking, when I see my precious loved ones that have been buried in the grave, when I see your precious loved ones that I have stood with you beside their grave, as we lowered them down into that tomb. Listen to me. I'm sure I'm going to get all over myself and I'm just going to praise the Lamb of God. Amen? But most of all, listen, when I see Jesus, the nail prints in His hands and feet, the scar in His side, His royal robe of white, I'll fall at His feet and worship Him. Fall there and there's the victory that affirms. Listen, dear child, Christians are often the butt of jokes, the target of criticism by this world. But I don't want you to ever forget, young people, please hear me tonight. Regardless of what you face and go through for your stand for Jesus Christ, always remember, no matter how ridiculed we may be down here on this earth, we are on the winning side. We are on the winning side. Verse 3 says, And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be as ashes under the soles of your feet. In that day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Friend, you can call me a fanatic down here, but I'm going to be called faithful up there. Sometimes we are attacked. Sometimes we are ridiculed. But listen, we're going to be rewarded in that day. Malachi looks into the future. When Jesus comes back to this earth, his saints come with him to rule and reign over the earth. Hey, we may be rejected today, but listen, the Bible says we will rule over all one day. It'll be a victorious day. Behold, Malachi says, the day coming. Friend, Jesus is coming again. The Lord is coming again. I wonder, will it be a day of judgment for you as we preach this morning? Or will it be a day of jubilation? Friend, you know what? One of the ways, I believe, one of the ways that you can verify your salvation is that you've got a longing in your heart for Jesus to come and take you out of this old world. Friend, I don't want the pleasures of this world. I don't.
don't want what this world has to offer. I want Jesus. I want heaven. It's been told that one day a man by the name of James Black was headed for the post office in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. And as he was going to the post office, he decided to take a different route on this day. He decided to cut through an alley to save some time. He'd never been through the alley before. He was not aware of all the poverty and misery that it contained. And so as he walked down that lonely street, that lonely alley, he saw a young girl sweeping the porch of an old broken down, ramshackled house. She was dressed poor, and in her young face there were already traces of worry, already traces of neglect. Young lady, he asked, do you go to Sunday school? And she replied, no, sir, I'd like to, but I don't have anything fit to wear. But, sir, how I'd love to go. Soon, James Black's wife and some friends had delivered clothing and all the things that would be needed to make that young girl happy and feel wanted and fit for church. And thus began a faithful attendance record for both the Sunday school and what was known then as the Epworth League. That little girl, Bessie, did not miss Sunday school. She did not miss a meeting. Each time there was a roll call, she was there. But one day when her name was called, there was no reply. And so again, James Black called her name and still no reply. Went through the roll call again, still no reply. And troubled thoughts went through his mind. Maybe, maybe her drunken father had forbidden her to come. Perhaps she had taken another beating from him. After church, Black hurriedly made his way to Bessie's house and he knew if she wasn't in Sunday school, something was wrong. And when he arrived, he found Bessie, this little girl, he found her very sick. Realizing that it was so serious, he called for a doctor who diagnosed it as a case of advanced pneumonia. As Black walked back to his house, he could not shake off the feeling that had come over him when Bessie had failed to respond to the roll call that morning. And that thought kept coming back to him that someday there's going to be a roll call in heaven. Our names are going to be called. Are we going to answer? And later he sat down at the piano and without any effort at all, the words just seemed to tumble from his soul. The tune came in the same manner. The song he wrote was first sang a few days later at little Bessie's funeral. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair, when the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is caught up yonder, I'll be there. And I want to ask you something tonight. When the roll is called up yonder, will you be there? Are you facing judgment? Are you looking forward to jubilation, to celebration? Heads are bowed, eyes are closed.